Between oppression and revolution, one woman's fight for freedom in Yemen. In the interview, Yemeni rights activist and Nobel Peace Prize winner Tawakul Karman. You're the first Arab woman to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. What was the moment like when you first heard the news? At first, I didn't even know that I'd been awarded the prize. On that day, I was in my tent on Tahrir Square in Sana'a, in the midst of the demonstrators. I actually found out from the television that I had been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. As I say, I was sitting in my tent working on my laptop when a friend called me and said, Tawakul, I congratulate you. You've been awarded the prize. I wasn't immediately sure which accolade he was talking about because a news magazine had contacted me to tell me I was on a list of the world's hundred most important intellectuals. I thought he meant that. Moments later, I switched on the TV and saw the headline, Tawakul Kaman has been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The joy was indescribable, both for me and for the other protesters, as the prize has such great significance. So you not only shared the joy, but also the prize with the thousands of demonstrators who were on Tahrir Square. Exactly. The prize is all the more important because it's not just for me. It's also an accolade for the peaceful young people's revolution in Yemen. The demonstrators were oppressed by President Saleh in the worst possible way, yet they resisted the machine guns of his security forces without violence, though they did have access to weapons. People were shot in the streets while calling for peace. The Nobel Peace Prize is recognition of the Yemeni revolution and the Arab revolution, as well as recognition of the very active role played by Arab women. You're active in politics, journalism, human rights and women's rights. Is the last one the most important for you? I campaign for human rights, and if you talk about human rights, then women's rights are obviously in the forefront, because women make up half of any society. But I don't believe women should campaign for their rights solely as women. They should campaign for their home as a whole. Only then can they assert their rights in society. That's what women have done in the Arab Spring. What role did your husband play in that? How has he influenced your life? He plays a very important role. When he asked me to marry him, I said, you know what I'm involved in. But if you promise that you will always support me, I will marry you. He promised me that, and he's always kept his word. I also have a wonderful family. My parents and my brothers and sisters cared for my children when I was away during the revolution. But the most important support comes from my husband because he believes in me strongly. Let's return to your parents. Your father, Abdel Salam Kaman, is a politician. Did you inherit your passion for politics from him? Did he ever influence your political leanings? You're both members of the same party. My father. In general, I don't like talking about myself. That's a real effort. I thought we'd be talking more about Yemen. We'll come to that. Anyhow, I grew up in a political environment. 
My father noticed my interest in politics fairly early on. He taught me and the whole family a great deal. Sincerity, honesty, transparency. You're a member of the moderate Islamist Islam party a conservative party that's close to the Muslim Brotherhood. But you're an emancipated woman. How can you reconcile that? I'm an emancipated woman within the Isla party. Exactly. Isn't that a contradiction? I think it's extremely important for women to get involved in politics. Women have to fight hard to make their way to the upper ranks and maintain their position there. That's why I firmly believe that women should become members of political parties. And that is exactly what I myself have done. I could have joined a different party, but the most important issue is that women need to remain active in politics. The agreement drafted by the Gulf Cooperation Council foresees the former governing party and the opposition parties sharing power in a transitional government. What do the demonstrators say about the solution? The agreement does indeed guarantee that we will see the end of Ali Abdullah Saleh's regime. But it also grants him and his followers freedom from any kind of prosecution. And the demonstrators have rejected that. And they rejected the agreement because they know that Saleh is lying. I don't mean to speak negatively about anyone. But it's a fact that Saleh did nothing but lie to his people for 33 years. He once admitted so himself when he said he wasn't governing, but he was dancing with snakes. How do you see Yemen's future? What role will you, Tawaku Karman, play in it? You mean after the agreement? Yes. The deal has been signed, but Saleh won't honour the terms of the agreement. Yemen's future will be decided by the demonstrators on the streets. They will continue to power the revolution until we've reached our goal of having a modern, democratic, civil state. Yemen will become a strong nation, a nation whose people enjoy equal rights. That will serve to improve regional security. And that doesn't just apply to Yemen. Because we all have a common dream. We want to topple the dictators. And we will realize this dream together with all those who are striving for freedom and dignity. The future belongs to the people. This future saw its dawn in the toppling of the Tunisian president, Ben Ali. Thank you very much.